Okay, I'm going to call us back into order. It's been three, four minutes since I gave you your one-minute warning. Um, so I need everybody to take their seats and to cease conversations and to take their seats. Okay, we are back in order. Okay, so we are now out of executive session. We are back to live streaming with the business meeting recorders. So first of all, I want to say, I meant to say this at the end of executive session, I forgot, um, for the text that was distributed in the room, um, when we get to the lunch break, if people would uh, bring that text and we'll make a pile on the front so that we can dispose of that. So the actions that were taken in the executive committee was the formation of a committee on investigation. Can you pull up that text? Because we, be we will be publishing the text of the resolution in the public minutes because we did run it like we confirmed that this is something that we are good to publish um, to the extent that a lawyer will ever tell you you're good on anything. Um, and that, and per r one r this is um, reporting on the outcome of the executive session in order to be able to do the thing that the executive session decided to do. So the following resolution was passed during the executive session. Resolved that a committee of seven be elected by ballot to investigate the Hugo Award Administrator for Chengdu Worldcon, the Chengdu Worldcon Hugo Subcommittee, and the chairs of Chengdu Worldcon for allegations regarding their conduct in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards, and the committee be instructed to report resolutions regarding its recommendations to the 2025 business meeting. Further resolved that items D11 and D12 on this year's business meeting agenda be referred to said committee further resolved that the committee has the power to fill vacancies by appointment. This is a committee that will be elected by ballot, so we will use the procedures for MPC balloting in terms of the instant runoff and how we count the votes. So um, I'm going to open up nominations in a minute. Um, any current member of WISFIS is eligible to be nominated. Um, if you are in the room, you will need to indicate your assent to nomination. Generally, that's done by not saying that you object to it. Um, for those not in the room, they will need to submit written consent to nomination to business meeting at glasgow2024.org by 5 p.m. BST today. It would be helpful if those emails included your membership number so that if necessary, we can confirm WISFIS membership. Um, and then we will do the balloting of the committee um, tomorrow along with the balloting for the MPC committee. Um, I do want to remind the body that per um, our parliamentary authority, the members elected to a committee on investigation should be folks who are known to have good character and judgment by the body. <laughs> I would also encourage you all to consider what sorts of perspectives and roles um, and expertises you might want to have on this committee, including, say, lawyers. We, there was you know, conversations about perhaps people who speak Chinese. There are lots of different kinds of expertises that you might want to consider here. So I'm just gonna let the body know that they might wanna think about that. And so um, with that, um, is there anyone wishing to nominate someone for the committee? And I am going to let people, for the sake of time, just say their name and who they're nominating, and I will restate it. Terry Ash nominating Terry Carney. Terry Ash nominating Terry Carney. Are they in the room? Okay. Kate Secor nominating Ingvar is, yes, okay. Um, you can stay standing if you have. Okay.
Okay. And I'm just going to read all of these out at the end to be clear. Um, Okay. I, I do apologize for folks on the live stream. I know that this is all off mic. I will be restating all of these once we have them. Warren Buff nominating Farah Mendelssohn. Okay, you do accept? Yes. Okay, in the back. Sorry, what was the last, your last name? I, I will be re re I will be reading all of these out, and we'll make sure we have all the names we think we have. Okay, I am going to nominate uh, Chris Garcia because I already got that consent for nomination. So I'm assuming that means he wants to be nominated. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read off what I have now. Um, that doesn't mean nominations are closed, but we have enough. I want to make sure that we know who we have. So, so far we have Terry Carney, Ingvar, Warren Buff, Chris Barkley, Elspeth Kovar. I will go slower. I realize there's a captioner who probably wasn't keeping up with that. Dr. Science, Randall Shepard. Randy is in the room. Okay, and you consented, okay. Uh, Todd Dashoff, Chuck Surface, Jason Sanford. Is Jason in the room? He's not. Okay, so uh, uh, just make sure that you let him know that you nominated him and to submit that. Um, Cliff Dunn, Farah Mendelson, Nicholas White, who is not in the room currently, Chris Garcia, who's not but has already consented, and Alan Bond, who's not in the room currently. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. Um, and we will prepare these ballots um, and have them available tomorrow. Um, as stated in the agenda, the plan is for the head table staff with possibly a few other volunteers who are used to and counting these ballots during the meeting to act as the tellers, except for those members of the head table who are nominees. Um, and that will be the plan for who will act as the tellers for this election. Okay. We're gonna move on. Okay, the next item before us, having been postponed from yesterday, is D9, the business meeting study group, which is on page 16 or thereabouts 17. 17 of the agenda. So for those of you who were not here yesterday, we are aware that the numbers on the table of contents, there was a slight pagination issue and they may be off by one in either direction. So if I give a number, I'm trying to give the number that it's actually on, but if I, it's not, it's within one page of that. Um, so, 
D.9, the business meeting study group, I'm going to recommend a debate time of, where's my spreadsheet? Yes, there's a spreadsheet. I know you're shocked. Um, I'm going to recommend a debate time of six minutes for this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. Um, I know you told me whether Farah or Colin wanted to speak first, but I don't remember. Okay, Colin. I'll recognize Colin is one of the maker of the motions, makers of the motion to speak. Thank you, Mixed Chairperson. Colin Harris, he, him. We do. The Worldcon has made a lot of progress in recent years in openness, transparency, participation. We have done that with our membership. We have done that with our programming. It is now time to do that with our governance. Um, we need to recognize that we have suffered in our governance in recent years that whilst we in the room, who are not typical of the other 5,000, understand how all of this works, and while we in some cases may feel that we enjoy LARPing business meeting um, rules as part of our convention experience, that is not necessarily the way in which we should be governing a, a society of this amount of history, of this amount of impact. We have not come here with specific recommendations, even though there were some things as individuals we thought would be great to change. Because the way in which things like the choice of Roberts, um, how to involve the wider body, whether online participation is a good idea, these things all interact with each other. And there are other motions coming up later, such as popular ratification, that also interact with those same questions. It is not helpful to have dueling resolutions that just pick away at bits of the problem, such as having 7-9 added last year and taken out this year. It is time for us to actually step back and ask what is the best way for us to govern ourselves in a way that is efficient, that avoids the need for 20 hours of business meeting, that enables everyone who wants to to participate, and that recognises you know, the fact that we are a global event and that ability to sit in a room for this many hours should not be seen as, well, these are the only people who care enough to contribute or who should have a voice. We really need to be better than that. Thank you. That was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Uh, I, I am in favor of the resolution. I come to propose either, as the chairperson directs me, would be prudent on a parliamentary basis, either further instructions for this body or um, replacement instructions. And I'm sorry that I've scribbled this down too late for the secretary to have put it uh, into text that you all can read, so I hope you will bear with me as I read fairly long document. Resolved, uh, I, this was originally by resolution, that the co chair shall convene a committee on the governance of WISFIS. Such committee shall consider and report to the 2025 business meeting possible ways to restructure and improve the governance of WISFIS, including without limitation the provisions of the WISFIS Constitution, the standing rules of the WISFIS business meeting, the administration of site selection and voting, and the administration of the Hugo Awards. The committee is directed to seek ways to allow greater participation in the governance of WISFIS by members of WISFIS who do not attend the WISFIS business meeting. Without limitation, the committee may consider proposals to create one or more new legal entities, uh, allowing for some functions of WISFIS governance to be handled by a representative body and or providing that some decisions regarding the governance of WISFIS be made by via mail, electronic, or similar asynchronous voting by the members of WISFIS. The committee is strongly encouraged to provide details regarding implementation of proposals it makes and rules governing transition from the current system of WISFIS governance. That's, I don't know if it needs a second, but <laughs> thank you. Um, I, I will say I envision this as somewhat broader than the original concept of D9, and indeed I suspect and hope that some of the items we will consider later in the agenda would be appropriately referred to this body, uh, including some of the questions about how Hugos are uh, administered. So I, I ask 
for the chair and the parliamentarian's assistance in turning this into something that is helpful. So it seems like this is either an amendment by substitution or an amendment to add sort of everything after the, I think should be formed to uh, create additional instructions. I'm going to ask the maker, so I can't tell you what your feelings are. I, I would be satisfied with either of those situations. Okay. Yeah. So I, I am gonna say that should we get a second on this, I know there was one, but we haven't actually decided what it is yet. Um, I am going to be asking consent of the body to um, wait to handle this until after the lunch break so that we can have this typed up. Um, that doesn't mean that you all have to agree to that, but I just wanna let you give you a heads up on that. I, I will not be here after the lunch break and that's fine. You can still do it after the lunch break. Okay, the maker of the motion won't be here after the lunch break is what he just said. And I think Colin is saying you won't be either. Okay, so like I said, you don't have to do that, but I just wanna I'll give have, you a heads up. I'll have it done typed up and then do it okay, so let me consult my parliamentarian and deputy presiding officer. Okay, so it is the sense of the head table that um, we are not able to decide for you whether it is an amendment by substitution or additional instructions, and we do need you to tell us what I, you want I to do. I move that these be added as additional instructions. Okay. Okay, so this is a motion to amend by adding additional instructions to the committee, which are being typed up once we know what that word is. Okay. When I get the text on the slide, it should be considered as, it should be considered as essentially additional language to the scope of the study group that would, that would, I believe, I believe it will follow item three. I can cross check that once I have the text in front of me. Yes. A what? A what kind of motion? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. There's one presiding officer in this room. I'm going to have to ask again that the body not make rulings on my behalf. I recognize the speaker. The speaker was in order to make a motion to postpone definitely until after lunch. The speaker was asking if it was in order to do so. Is the speaker wishing to make that motion? Yes. Okay, it has been moved to postpone this item definitely until after lunch. Is there a second? Second. Okay, there is a second. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of postponing it until after lunch? You. Next chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Look, I don't care if this comes up after lunch or tomorrow or at some other time, but seeing as we had a bit of a nine-headed hydra of an amendment, 
that the top table is having to work their way through. It's probably a waste of our time, given how far we are behind schedule, to wait for this to get worked out now. I'd rather see this brought up later when the uh, text is sorted. And so I so move. I'm going to ask the maker to clarify, are you postponing definitely to take it up after immediately after lunch or to not be taken up until or not be taken up before after lunch? Take, can not be taken up before after lunch. I apologize. Okay, thank you. So that does not mean that we will take it up necessarily immediately following lunch, but that we will not take it up before that time should have passed. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Perry Ann Lurie, she, her. I don't have a dog in this hunt, but you know, we already postponed this from yesterday so that the makers of the original motion could be here and they will not be here after lunch. They are here now. We're gonna make them come back again tomorrow. I don't think that's fair to them. Okay, I will inform the body that the text of the amendment is up on the screen. Is there anyone else, anyone else wishing to speak on the postponement? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. Question. What is your question? I don't know how to say this, Please come to the microphone. Elspeth Kovar, she, her. Um, I don't know. Sorry, better? Elspeth Kovar, she, her. I think the people proposing this amendment should be allowed to speak. That is debate. It is not a point of inquiry. Do you have a privileged question? Uh, at this time, we have 67 total seconds remaining. Did you say you wish to make a motion about the amendment or about the postponement? About the amendment. That would not be in order as the item before us right now is the postponement. Okay. I had asked if there was anybody else wishing to speak on the postponement. Nobody stood, and I said that we are ready to move to a vote. So we are now going to vote on the postponement of the amendment and the underlying resolution to not be taken up before we get back from lunch. All those in favor of the postponement, please raise the hand. All those opposed, and it does not pass, the item is not postponed. We are now back to the amendment by Mr. Pomeranz, which is up on the screen. I believe that the last thing we had was a speech in favor of the amendment from Mr. Pomeranz. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Yes, I'm sorry? Part of inquiry. Kate Secor, she, her. Mr. Chair, was this ruled an amendment by substitution or just a regular amendment to add? It was an amendment to add. And if we disagree with that decision, is there a way to disagree with that decision? No, because the, the maker of the motion did clarify that he was wanting to have it be an addition. Okay. So that, that is the form that the amendment was made in. Okay, um, I recognized Gareth for a speech against. Gareth Kavna, he, him. Uh, mixed chairperson, while we are grateful for the input on this, we very specifically limited the scope of the committee because we find that committees have very, very large scope, never deliver on anything. We have limited our scope to a very specific area to ensure we actually come back with recommendations. I would also note there is already a committee looking at the Yugos. That was the speech against. I'm gonna ask the timekeeper how we're doing. I need a moment. <laughs> okay, do we have enough time that I can recognize another speech in favor? Okay. So I, I do not think so. Okay. Do, do your math. Yes, I'll do my math. Okay. Apologies, everyone. We're going to take a brief pause while we figure out where we are on time. I understand the irony of this, but the reality is that the way we do timekeeping is complicated. complicated. 
it would be in order to call the question. Wait, uh, that's true. I forget that that's a rule that we have. Yes. It has been moved to suspend. It has been moved to suspend the rules and call the question. I will remind the body that calling the question does not just end debate. It also ends the making of additional amendments. That is part of what calling the question does, just, just so that we're all clear on that. Yes. Cliff Dunn, he, him. Are we calling the question on the, um, we're just calling the question on the amendment up here, not on the whole thing, right? Correct, because I believe it is not yet in order to call the question on the underlying resolution. So the motion to suspend the rules requires a two thirds vote and is neither debatable nor amendable. The motion to call the question, it requires a two thirds vote and is neither debatable nor amendable. Therefore, unless somebody objects, I'm going to just take one vote. If we get a two thirds vote, that will be both the suspension and the ending of debate. Is there any objection? Hearing none, all those in favor of suspending the rules and calling the question, please raise the hand. Thank you, all opposed. And the motion passes and the question has been called on the amendment. This is the addition of the text that is on the screen to the instructions of the remit of the D.9 study group. All those in favor of this amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those opposed, thank you. And the amendment does not pass. The item before us is now D.9 as it was originally presented. I believe the last thing we had was I recognized the speech against, which became an amendment. So is there a speech in, I'm actually gonna ask for a speech against. Seeing none, is there a speech in favor? Uh, I think we are actually out of time for speech and okay. favor. Okay, no, we are out of time. Yeah, we're out of time for speech. Sorry, I forgot that I had asked you for time. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a whole minute ago. Um, okay, so we are out of time for speeches in favor. Do we have time remaining for speeches against? Um, I believe we have 58 seconds. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? I kind of need to call the question. Calling the question is not in order because we have not had a speech against. If nobody wishes to have a speech against, we will just move to a vote. Is there anyone wishing to speech against? speak against? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The item currently before us is item D.9 on page 17, the creation of the business meeting study group. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed, thank you. As is uh, my remit as chair, since the specifics of the formation of the committee was not specified in the motion, I am going to appoint Colin and Farah to serve as chairs, assuming they consent. They are both nodding and they consent. Anyone wishing to uh, be included in this committee should give their information to the secretary. If you are going to be at tomorrow's meeting, you should come to tomorrow's meeting with your name, email, and the, and the name of the committee written on a piece of paper that you can give to the secretary. If you are not going to be at tomorrow's meeting, you should email business meeting at. The thing you should not do is immediately when we hit a break or a recess, all bombard the secretary at once demanding that, you, that they take your information now, okay? Because we're not gonna do that again. Thank you. So anybody wishing to be on that committee, we will get that information and we will pass that along to the chairs. The next item before us is item D.13, the apology resolution. I am recommending a debate time. Yes. Okay, we're gonna give the secretary time to catch up.
Uh, mix, sorry, Rafe Richards, he, him, mix chairperson. I move that this item is out of order because if not on the face of it, in substance, it, con it contains allegations of improper and unconstitutional behaviour against identifiable individuals and therefore per earlier rulings of the chair and Robert's rules of order, it is not fit for this meeting. Thank you. Um, so I will just note that um, the previous resolutions we had discussed sort of what is considered proper, but no actual ruling had was made on them because they referred to committee. I just want to clarify that for the body. This resolution is um, complicated. I do agree that it is, a, it is an edge case. And therefore, I'm going to use my prerogative in Robert's rules to actually put the question to the body. Um, I, I am not sure whether this should be considered in order or if it should be considered out of order because um, it is too close to making allegations about specific behavior. So this will be a simple majority vote of the body. A vote in favor will be to sustain the point of order and consider the root, and therefore if, if the, sorry, if the eyes have it, the resolution will be considered out of order and will no longer be before us. If the nays have it, the resolution will be considered to be in order and we will proceed accordingly. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. There is no, there is no emotion to amend in order right now. Okay. So. The question before us is whether or not to sustain the point of order. All those in favor of sustaining the point of order, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and I'm going to say that the no's have it. Okay, and the motion is in order. So the, what is before us? Yes. Uh, the, Mr. Chairperson, Donald Eastlake, he, him. Uh, the next to last paragraph of this resolution concerns making certain nominees finalists and is redundant with D14, which does the same thing. And I have consulted with Cliff Dunn, and since I believe the meeting, this motion hasn't actually been stated and isn't actually before the body, uh, he is con uh, happy with removing the penultimate paragraph of this concerning that. So that this question of making items finalists will only come before the body once as part of D14 and not both as one paragraph of D13 and then again as D14. Okay, um, so while I understand that Mr. Eastlake believes that the motions has not, has not been stated, it is my understanding based on the way we do things that because the text of the body has been provided to everyone, it is now considered to be in the hands of the body. So I'm going to ask the body, is there any objection to striking the penultimate paragraph of D.13, which is in essence also handled in D.14 so that we are only handling this question in one resolution? Is there any objection? Yes. There is an objection, okay. Is there a move to suspend the rules to do that? So moved, I hear a second, okay. The motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable nor amendable. All those in favor of striking, uh, of suspending the rules so that we can strike the penultimate paragraph of D.13 and only handle the question in D.14. Do you have a question? Yes. Marianne Lurie, she, her. I think we would need to strike 
the penultimate and the ultimate paragraph. Correct. That we will call that an editorial revision. Yes. Okay. All those in favor of striking the penultimate and ultimate paragraph of D.13 so that the matter is only handled in D.14, suspending the rules to do that, and then that would also do that. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion passes. So the rules have been suspended and that has been done. So the last two paragraphs of D.13 have been struck. And D.13 is now before us. I, is, do you have a privileged question? Okay. Please come to a microphone. Uh, Jack Foy, he, him. Would it be in order to refer this to the committee that we established uh, earlier today? It would be, but that's not the purpose I recognized you for, so you would need to wait for that. I, I understand. Okay. Um, I didn't set a debate time yet, Correct. did I? Okay, yeah. Okay, I was going to set a debate time of eight minutes given the debate that has already expired. I'm going to recommend a total debate time of six minutes. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. I will now recognize the maker of the motion for a speech in favor. Mix Chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. I move to refer this to the committee we created earlier. Second. Okay. The motion to refer to committee uh, to the, I'm assuming the committee on investigation. We have yeah. created several. Okay. <laughs> the motion to refer to the committee on investigation has been moved and seconded. Uh, do you wish to speak to it? You don't have to, but since you were walking back. Okay. The uh, maker does not feel the need to speak in favor. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Since you're here, do you consent to nomination for the Committee on Investigation, Mr. White? Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, Nicholas White, he, him, also, incidentally, this year's Worcester Division Head and Hugo Administrator. Um, mixed Chairperson, there's been a, a lot of debate already on all of these issues today, and I apologize, I wasn't present for very much of it. I think people are going to give us very funny looks if we do not say something definitive coming out of this meeting about what happened last year. I think there is no doubt that hurt was caused to the finalists who were disqualified without explanation. There is no doubt that hurt was caused to all of us who care about the Hugos, and I think this meeting needs to at least say something. I, as well I'm as sorry. It took me a second to parse. I am going to have to say that the statement about why or why not people were disqualified was out of order. Okay, I beg your pardon. But I, I, as I say, I think apologizing for hurt that has been caused is something that we, ca we can do and something that I think we should do. So uh, please, let's not fudge this one to a committee. Let's just, it doesn't need much debate. We know what the right thing to do is. Let's just do it. Okay, that was a speech against. Do you have a question or a speech? Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Mara Misho, uh, she, they. I definitely think there has been harm and I definitely think we should not wait another year before we offer at minimum an apology. And it is very possible, I believe, to offer amendments so that we retain the apology and lose the details that are at issue here. Can I, can I see any objections? That was the speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? This is on the motion to refer to the Committee on Investigation. Okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? I just want to clarify, I don't see anybody wanting to speak, so you're going to move to a vote. All those in favor of removing, uh, removing, referring uh, D.13 to the Committee on Investigation, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion does not, does not pass and the, the, hmm, and the resolution is not referred. And so we are back to the resolution that is before us, which is D13 with the last two paragraphs struck. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? J. 
Jerry Sullivan, she, her. Um, I am particularly, I, I believe we all have our narratives. We've had a lot of discussion. I do not have a, you know, I do not hold with the, what seems to be the common narrative. I'm particularly concerned about the statement about the unknown and unquantifiable numbers of ballots that were supposedly, we believe, or that other people believe were removed uh, because of uh, slate voting, alleged slate voting. I personally have not seen the evidence and I've read a great deal. So I, as this stands, I'm, I can't vote, I, I encourage people not to vote in favor of, of apologizing for something that we don't have proof of. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Yes. On either side. So if, uh, if you're wanting to make an amendment, I was recognizing you thinking that you were wanting to make a speech. So that would be in order now. You may now make an amendment. You need a microphone. Yep. Mara Michaud, she, them, I move that we amend it uh, to retain the apology, uh, but to delete the details. Uh, as uh, I believe I sent the text to the secretary earlier, uh, although you would need to delete the last two paragraphs since the previous change. I okay, huh? that was sent to business meeting at at 9.51 a.m. Can you yes. give us one moment? Do you not have access to the I email? It I mean changes a great deal. Yeah, I was going to say the problem is like, okay. I'm going to ask, I, I need to be able to hear the people up here. The issue is that if we pull the cord without the remote, we can't get it back up on the screen. <laughs> and the remote has gone missing. It, it has not been, it has not been marked up for. Yeah. Uh, it just is like just passed. That means it has to be considered an amendment. That's, that's the okay, here's the thing. It is 12.03 p.m. I am getting the sense that even if we are able to move th through this in a timely fashion, we are not going to finish it um, before the lunch break. So my recommendation is going to be that we go ahead and move to the lunch break. We'll, we, we will resume the lunch break with the text of the motion on the screen. We have 45 minutes, we can get that done. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then we will, your motion hasn't been seconded yet, so we will essentially resume from the lunch break with seeing if there is a second for your amendment. Okay, so. We are going to be in recess until 12.48.